Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad today to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. Thank you for you are our glory and the lifter up of our head. Our head is lifted up because of you. We will never be put to shame in our faith and in the things that we have believed of you and professed before men. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because the day of reward is here. And we receive our reward in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. All right, then. We are still in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it's getting more interesting. I remember yesterday, I wanted to go into something, and I had to stop. Because uh, it's, it's opening a new chapter in, the, in, in, in what we're saying. So let's go to verse 24. 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered. See? So the end will not come until he has delivered. See, look at it. Up the kingdom to God. You need to get this. Even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So Jesus is going to put down all rule. You see, you don't, you don't realize this. That God is coming to judge the whole world. But before God judges the whole world, he will first of all make the whole world to test, have a taste of his power, of his goodness. You know why? So his judgment is going to be simple. You saw it. Why didn't you believe? So the power of God is going to be made manifest in every nation, in every authority. I'm telling you the truth. There is no nation on the earth that will not taste the power of God. And, and let me tell you something. That's the day that we are in right now. I'm telling you the truth. So God, God is raising his truth. You see, when you see corruption getting to its peak, when you see wickedness and, and evil getting to its peak, there's a reason for that. Don't think God is sleeping. No, there's a reason for that. And what's the reason? God is, is letting you see the evil. And then he brings the good. And then you see, and you are left to compare. You, it, God will not be just to judge a man who's all his life has seen evil and never seen good. And here comes God judging him why he didn't do good. See, God will not be just to do that. Where is the example of the good? God can only judge a man who... He had given the choice. See, that's why he said in the John, he said, I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life so that you will live. But what did he do? I said before you, I put the two before you. So God will surely put the two. Every nation under the earth, Hakubasha, every nation under the earth will taste of God's power. And that's where God's children come in. And, and, and I, I can tell you this for free. God is raising up children that are going to instruct governments. People who are going to show his power. Ah, beginning from our nation. We will test what it is. I'm telling you the truth. We will test what it is for the righteous to be on the truth. When I mean righteous, a real righteous man to be on the throne, who will have a test of it? Who will see it? Because God has his children in our nation. And then the same thing he's doing in every nation. And listen, we are approaching that time. When I say we are approaching that time, we are counting days. See, if you, if you have a sight, if you, if you can see what God is doing. If you're in tune with the Spirit, you will know that we are counting, I mean, physically now, we are counting days, not months anymore. And then, and then the same thing happening all over the world. 
There are people who have been interceding. You don't know their names. You don't see them. There are people who have been interceding. There are people who God have been teaching. God have been training. God have put them. He's hating them. But you see, he has already started. But we on this side, we will see it in our nation as a sign. Then we will rise up and, and begin to take the whole of Africa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You may not understand what I'm talking about, but you will see it come to pass. Jesus is taking over every nation, every nation, every nation under the earth. He is taking over. And when he does, he will begin to reveal God's plan for that nation. And then people will see and testify that righteousness exalts a nation. And they will know that truly sin is a reproach. But God is doing it not just for his children to be glad. He's doing it also because he's going to judge the unrighteous with it. Let me not go further. There are some things I can't reveal to you because God has not commanded me to reveal them because he knows why. Praise God. Now, 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 now. Look at this now. So, so I said, he's going to, not, not just me, now Paul said, he's going to hand over every rule and authority. Verse 25, for he must reign. Did you see the word must? He must reign till he had put all not some, all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. He says, Jesus is going to reign until he puts all enemies under his feet. Now he gives you an idea that the last enemy, so when he says all enemies, he wants you to reason this way. He will, he will reign until he put all enemies under his feet. And he says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed he didn't say he's Adolf Hitler. He didn't say he's one um, human being. He said the last enemy that Jesus is going to destroy is death. Death is a spirit. I've told you this before. Anybody that dies, no matter how born again the person was. You know, because sometimes Christians say, no, we don't die. We just sleep. Yes, we just sleep. But then it doesn't mean you've gone to be with the Lord. Like we say, he has gone to be with the Lord. No, 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 no. He hasn't gone to be with the Lord. He died. See, so where is he? He's, he's been held captive. Though he was a righteous man, he's been held captive by the spirit of death. And he will be in bondage to the spirit of death until this day comes. That's why I should choose not to die, brothers and sisters. <laughs> See, not everybody will receive this message. But I pray your heart is opened. Not to hear me. But I pray it sparked off, sparks of a thinking in you. And then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, can you talk to me about this? Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Not the right to say, hey, 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 what are you saying? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say, no, 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 Lord. What's he saying? Yeah, that's the right attitude. Go and ask the Lord. What, Lord, what's he saying? And let the Lord, and let your heart be open. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is dead. For he had, notice, say he had put all things under his feet. His feet. But when he said that, when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted. See? How? Which did put all things under him. So there is somebody that put all things under the feet of Jesus. So when he says, when he put all things under the feet of Jesus, he is telling, hey, be smart enough to say it is somebody that is putting all things. So the person that is putting all things under the feet of Jesus is not part of the things that will be put under him. That's what Paul is saying. You understand that? 
So Jesus, God, the Father, is not part of what will be put under him. That is somewhere he's going. I want you to follow. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. Did you see that? <laughs> Are you understanding this all? It's too um, big for you. No, hold on. Listen. It, it's not Jesus that is just going around conquering and conquering. It is God that is saying, hey, I'm going to put the spirit of sickness under your feet. See, the moment God says that, the wisdom comes. You understand what I'm saying? Now, now when, you, when you look at the physical, there was a season, God's children, it, it just believed that uh, when you're born again, you should be broke. And, and Satan held God's children captive with poverty. I mean, they were locked with poverty. God's children, I'm talking about, I'm telling you. So it was normal. When you, when you get born again, you know, you just know, you know, now I cannot steal again. I cannot do runs. I cannot do so. You know what? I live a holy life. So living a holy life means if I don't have a job, oh, Father, give me today my daily bread. If I can just see food to eat, I'll be fine. I don't need much. I don't even need to have a car, you know. All these things I'm seeing in my neighbor's house, uh, they are a distraction. Watching TV is a distraction. I just want to serve you. Be reading my Bible every day. See? Now, you didn't know what God can do with your life then. Do you know what's going on? Do you know what's going on? Poverty was still over us. And then a day comes when God says, I'm putting the spirit of poverty under your feet. Now, what happened? Wisdom was released to the church. Suddenly, certain preachers began to rise up and began to talk about how God wants to bless you. And many of them were persecuted in those days, but they kept at it. Praise God. They kept at it and they began to preach it and they began to preach it, you know, or a robot and, 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 and Kenneth Hagin and they began to teach, they began to preach it. Praise God. Of course, of course, you see, people have taken their teaching to another extreme. Yes, but, but don't forget the essence of why they came, why they preached what they were preaching. Till this day, their message have brought... Now, what was going on? God says, I put you under the feet. Now, there was also a time where it was too good to be, to be sick as a, as a believer. Oh, God is trying to teach me a lesson. You know, sickness is what keeps us humble before the Lord. If you are not sick, you will not go to the Lord and pray. And what prayer? Not that God should heal you. God for strength to bear this sickness. There was a time that was the norm. And God said, hey, I'm putting sickness under the feet of Jesus. And suddenly the wisdom of God began to come in to the church. And men began to preach and teach about divine health and divine healing. And God began to do amazing miracles among his children. Praise God. So that's how it works. You hear me? God is putting governmental authority under the feet of Jesus in our day. And that's the reason the wisdom of God is coming now. See? Before, no, no, don't get involved with politics. No, 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 no. It's a dirty game. It's for, it's for, it's for the devils. No, no, no. How, how can you? How, how, how can you? But it, it's changing now because wisdom is coming. And hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. As God is doing that, he is also putting death under the feet of Jesus. And that is the last. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, the wisdom of God is going to begin to come into the church. And we are going to be looking at this thing that we have believed about dying and, and, and going to be with the Lord. And we will begin to question it. And say, so why do we have to die and, and go be with the Lord? The Lord himself is not dead. He's, he's, he, he rose from the dead, praise God. And we'll, be, we'll begin to consider these things. 
And as we begin to question it, the Spirit of God begins to open our hearts to his wisdom. As he's already begun to do with some of us. He's bringing his wisdom into our heart. And then you begin to look at it and you, you find boldness in your heart to begin to declare, I will not die. Hallelujah. Brakashandala brokoshiekedea. Time is up. <laughs> I feel like going on. Praise God. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>